Mystery Blanket Club Knitters. It's a very exciting day today because it's the final instalment of this year's club. And after 10 months of knitting, you now ha have all the patterns, all the pieces of the puzzle for this year's design. So I'm going to not only reveal to you the title of this year's blanket, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about the design inspiration behind the blanket as well. So the title of the 2020 mystery blanket is Our Precious Earth. So the inspiration for, the, for a mystery blanket um, has to be something that really, really motivates me. It has to be something that drives me for um, the duration of the design process. Now, it, it's a 10 month project. There's a lot of design work in that blanket. Um, so it has to be something that I'm very, very passionate about. Um, so I decided this year that I wanted to focus on our beautiful planet and to celebrate the Earth. Um, it's it's a great global concern at the moment. Um, the survival of our planet is in, in grave danger. Um, and, you know, when you look around you at what we have around us, um, the beauty of it all. It's just something that I, I feel very passionate about and I, I really wanted to celebrate in this blanket and to, to not only focus me on it while I was designing, but also uh, to focus my my members, my knitters too. Um, so I, I broke the design down into really four different sections. So at the bottom, we begin with uh, the sort of um, sand, the beach, if you like, um, moving into rocks, then into the sea, and then at the top, um, it's the sort of land section. Each of these sections has a colour story. So at the very bottom of the blanket, you've got the beach section, which is all sort of sandy biscuit shades, um, moving into greys for the rocks, and then blues for the sea, and then finally greens at the top. Blending of colours was a very important thing for this blanket. Um, the, the graduation of, of one set of colours into the next was something that I, I, I really made an important part of my uh, design this year. Um, so to help with this, um, I, I chose yarns, colours that um, were very, very close in shades that, that where I could Ease, quite easily blend one into the other and get this very kind of bl uh, gradual blended effect from the bottom to the top of the blanket. If you look at the very bottom of the blanket, so if we look at the blanket in terms of strips going, going across the blanket, um, you will see at the bottom there's those kind of sandy shades and then you'll see on each alternate strip, so on the next strip, strip number two going across, I begin to blend the sand colours with, with greys and then strip three is pure grey. And then in strip four, I'm blending the greys with the blues. Strip five is the blue strip. Strip six, I begin to introduce greens and then the strip at the top, number seven, is, the, is all shades of green at the top. So that was something that was really important for the design. I, to, and to help me with that, I, I knitted up a sort of a little mini blanket um, into which I planned out where all the colours were going to go. In no way is this how it actually ended up. Um, it's pretty close to it, but as always, I make a lot of changes as I go along, as the design develops. Um, but it gave me a really good reference for the colours and also gave me um, a good guide as to the quantities needed. For the project too. The choice of yarns for the project um, was a was a big consideration and I decided that I didn't want to just use cotton or wool but I, I really wanted to mix fibres in this project um, and I thought it would not only make it more exciting to design but also more interesting for you to knit up as well. So um, there are all sorts of fibres in there. There are wool mixes, cotton mixes. Um, I, I really wanted to include the Rowan Denim, Denim Revive rather, um, which is an eco-friendly yarn. I thought it was important to have that in the project. Um, and the graininess of this yarn, it's a very sort of dry, it has a very dry texture. I felt that worked really well um, next to and with um, smoother yarns like the Baby Silk Merino. So not only was I 
able to try and achieve texture through the patterns, but also through the choice of yarns as well. So now I'm going to talk about a few of the squares in the blanket. I'm not going to talk about them all because there's a lot in the whole blanket, but I'm just going to pick out a few um, and just let you into my thinking behind them and how they were created. So I'm going to start with uh, square number one, sand and surf. Uh, now this is a, a stripe, basically a stripe fabric with stocking stitch and moss stitch stripes. And there's a little bit of fair isle in there too. But what really excited me about this square was uh, as I was knitting it, I was flipping it over to check the back of the work. And I thought, hang on a minute, the wrong side of this fabric is actually really quite interesting. And uh, I then decided that um, I would not only use the right side of the fabric for square one, but I used the wrong side of that same fabric for square 43. Um, and, I, and I found myself throughout the project constantly you know, knitting up a square and then constantly checking the back of it to see whether or not it was anything that I could use for another square. And sometimes it was it was looking very interesting. I thought this is brilliant. Other times, no, it didn't look quite right. But it was it, it added a, quite a bit of excitement to the project to the design process for me. Something that I've not really done before, um, but I found um, very very exciting and um, hugely inspiring as I was designing the blanket. Strata is a square that combines together um, reverse stocking stitch stripes with moss stitch stripes. Um, it's a very basic, easy square to knit, but th this the, the the reverse stocking stitch and the moss stitch stripes alternating gave me the um, ability to to really blend colours together. Um, and this this same technique is repeated in ocean blues a little bit further on in the project. Old Sea Wall, uh, which is square number four, is another square where uh, not only the right side of the square was used in the design, but the wrong side was used too. So as I was designing this and I was very excited by, you know, the slip stitches in it and um, the, the reverse um, stocking stitch with the stocking stitch, making these little blocks of, of colour that look like a, a sea wall. Um, I flipped it over and thought, wow, the back of this fabric is really very lovely. So um, that gave rise to um, the option two squares. This, the, the reverse of old sea wall is um, the option two squares in the blanket. So um, for example, that's rock pools and also sandstone. And it was an incredibly exciting moment to discover that the right side and the wrong side of the fabric looks so different to each other, but each um, each of them I could use in the blanket. So that gave rise to, to two of the squares um, in the design. Shimmer and Little Ripples um, use, both use a lot of beads. Um, Shimmer uh, uses hooked in beads. I hope you'll forgive me for the amount of hooked in beads in this square. Um, but I just wanted to recreate the kind of ripples of the water and the beads are, are fabulous for representing sort of the, that, those glittery shapes that you get when the sun shines on the sea. And for little ripples, it's that little mini cable with a little lace stitch in between and beads. I'm just trying to represent really the, the, the small ripples in the in the water in the sea. I, I love combining cables together with beads and seeing what happens. I find this very interesting um, to do. And, um, you know, they're, they're one colour. Both of these squares are one colour in terms of yarn, but the beads just add, add that extra dimension, that extra sparkle, that extra little bit of colour, which um, really sort of brings them to life. The centre square is named after the um, title of the blanket. It's called Our Precious Earth. And in this square, I introduced, for the option one, I introduced um, a new technique called Japanese short row shaping. And um, for those of you that, have, that did the 2018 blanket, um, the Gaudi inspired blanket, you, you would have done some of this in that blanket. Um, if not, then I hope you managed to understand the instructions and managed to knit this square. There is an option two square if, uh, if you found it a bit tricky. Uh, but I just felt that the, the, the very soft, undulating lines that that movement 
of, of colour, of stripe, um, really suited the blanket and the theme. It, it provided another technique as well for the knitters to actually, you know, get their teeth into. Probably looks more complicated than what it is, but it's actually um, pretty easy to, to knit once you get the technique under your belt. Square 26 is called Hell Bay, and this is a, a, a direct reference to um, a very beautiful place in the City Isles in the UK um, where I've led uh, a few knitting holidays um, that some of you um, I know have, have joined me on. And the, the colours in the City Isles are just truly amazing. It's an amazing place. Um, it's very remote. It's very quiet. The most beautiful scenery. Um, so I just wanted to bring a little bit of that into this into this blanket. And that square is called Hell Bay, it's, it's really, if, if you can believe it, the water, when the sun was shining on it um, around the islands there, uh, was this amazing turquoise blue um, with the little shimmers as the sun caught it. So this one is a kind of a, a tribute to my, to my, uh, one of my favourite places um, to visit, uh, Hell Bay, which is on the island of Briar in the City Isles. So moving into the green section of the blanket. Um, as we move further up the blanket, there's more repeats of previous squares, but different colourways. So I'll pick out from that woodland, um, which is a uh, variation on square number two shells. Then you also have buds um, using green and blue beads with that lovely pear uh, soft green shade of yarn. Um, in Summer Light DK. Um, that's a, a variation on um, the beach, which is much further down in the project. So in the green section at the top, I'm going to pick out the square called Gauze. Um, now, when I was younger, living at home with my parents, we used to go on a lot of weekend walks. I lived in a very rural area. It was beautiful. Um, they, they still live there today. And we used to go walking around a place called the Sand Pits, where there were um, ponds and loads of trees and um, little bits of woodland and it was it was um, a real magical place to go as a child I used to love it and this square um, harks back to those walks where there were lots of bushes and shrubs quite dry shrubs um, I remember there being um, very vivid dark green with the shots of yellow I think the the the, um, the Bush was called broom. I seem to remember my mother saying, um, but it was it was the, these colours were were all around us when we went for these walks. So that square harks back very much to those those very fond memories that I have of family walks at the weekend. In this year's mystery blanket, there were seven option two squares, which gave those of you that perhaps are not too confident with colour work. Um, a, a chance to to knit something a bit a bit easier, um, a bit less tricky to knit up. Uh, the the centre square is a Japanese short row shape square, and you were given an option on this too, just in case you found that a little bit daunting. So I decided to keep the number of option two squares to a minimum in this design. Um, I really wanted the design to focus on the. Um, textured stitches and the, and the blending of colour so I didn't want the option two squares to be kind of shouting out or to look awkward against the the other squares that are much more harmonious and, and blended in the project. Um, I also chose to keep the shapes in those intarsia squares very simplistic so I, I reduced the shapes down to, to very basic forms and then just use some beads and some broidery just to bring out some details, add a little bit of extra colour, a little bit of sparkle to those seven squares. So for the edging of the blanket, I really wanted to continue the, the blending of the colours and this graduation of colour. So I decided to go for a very simplistic stitch structure, which probably most of you are quite happy about, I would think. Um, and I then gave a colour story to each edging. So the bottom edge has the sandy colours, uh, the left edge has the greys, the right edge, edge has the blues and the top edge has the greens. There's a, there's a few beads in there too, just to give a bit of sparkle, but essentially I, I just really wanted 
uh, the, the continuation of what's happening in the actual blanket itself to be fed then through into the into the edging and each one then just has a slightly brighter um, cast off with a with a sort of bit of a, a brighter color which just lifts the very edges of the blanket and hopefully ties all the colors in it together so that's it that's the end of the 2020 mystery blanket club you've got your last and final set of patterns now uh, the the title has been revealed so i really hope that you enjoy completing it um, if you haven't kept up with the monthly instalments please don't worry it really really doesn't matter um, What's really important to me is that you enjoy knitting up those squares, that you enjoy the techniques, you brush up on existing skills, you learn some new ones along the way, and that you really, really enjoy the project. The mystery blanket for me is uh, my most favourite thing of all that I design. I, I just immerse myself in it for many, many months designing it. and then I get a lot of joy and a lot of happiness from, from being in contact with, with you, the members, and um, hearing your stories and seeing what, how, how your projects are, are developing, how your blanket is coming along. So thank you so much for joining me this year. I really have enjoyed the journey and I really, really sincerely hope that you have too. We start the next mystery blanket in uh, February. The design is, is well underway. The yarn is ordered, the beads are ordered. Everything's ready for that. Lots of you have already signed up to it. And if you are signed up to it, um, let's look forward to February 2021 and a brand new mystery blanket adventure.